everybody. Welcome to another edition of Seize Your Business. I'm Jim Wazek from Success Enhancement and Kevin O'Flaherty, my co-host Hello. from O'Flaherty Law. And today we have a very interesting guest, Mohammed Fahim. And uh, Mohammed is a very interesting fellow who has done a lot of different things. He's owned uh, five different businesses. Uh, he at one point was a news anchor in Houston and is now uh, focused on a company he called Center for Strategic Solutions. And, and the real mission of it is to get people back to work, create more jobs in, um, in the states. He has worked on uh, reshoring programs, which is bringing uh, items back into our country to, uh, to manufacture. And has become, in this process, kind of a guru of knowing about government programs that uh, can actually help uh, companies. Often we hear the worst thing that can happen is somebody walks in your door and says, hey, I'm from the government, I'm here to help. And we, <laughs> and we joke about that, and there certainly are enough things uh, government does to get in the way of, of small business owners. But there are some things that the government actually can do to help. Uh, so, Mohammed, why don't you uh, maybe just give us, like, uh, you know, what drove you into this uh, this work? And then uh, we'll, uh, okay, thank you. Uh, thank you for uh, well, uh, you know, pleasure. Kevin and, Thanks for having uh, us. And Jim for being here. Yep. <laughs> for me on here. Uh, what brought me to this? Long story short, it was uh, purely by accident. What got me into business was by accident. Mm -hmm. I, I was working with uh, Fisher Scientific for the Allied Signals, uh, the Fisher Scientific Division. Uh, three years out of college, worked for them in the Middle East, came back to the country, uh, got married. My wife didn't want to go back to Saudi mm -hmm. Arabia, so we stayed over here. And uh, first year in Chicago, had a head-on collision with an 18-wheeler. Ouch. So you talk about uh, hate you know, when that getting a kick in the, in the, in the behind. Yeah. Uh, I was basically paralyzed uh, almost. I couldn't walk for two years after that. Oh, my God. And uh, that is what took me to Houston. And uh, I tell people most of the time, guys, that was the best thing that could have happened. Because mm -hmm. that got me on the path that I'm on now. And uh, that got all those businesses, quote unquote, started. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, moved to Houston to get into rehab, warm climate and everything. Uh, my uncle was there. He got me into a, a small clinical practice. A couple of weeks into that, I'm lying around. And uh, I see a lot of empty space in this. So the doctors are coming around, checking up on me. And I casually said, hey, doc, who does your marketing for you? Mm -hmm. And uh, they said, no, we don't have any career who does marketing. What do you guys, what do you know about marketing? I, well, I got a little background in marketing. We started chatting. Mm -hmm. And uh, they said, man, while you're undergoing treatment with us, do you mind helping us out with some marketing? Mm -hmm. That's how I got my first business started. I had absolutely no idea. I like to, I like to tell people this, that there are so many opportunities, especially mm -hmm. I was here as an immigrant. Okay, no, there are not too many connections and stuff. Okay, I didn't grow up in this country. So they called their, uh, their accountant over. And uh, he said, how much money do you have in your pocket? I said, I got $20. Mm -hmm. He said, can you give me five? I said, yeah, I mean, you know, I don't know what you want to do with it. He said, well, I'm going to go down to Harris County. And I'm going to get you some papers for a DBA. Mm. I'm like, what is a DBA? Mm -hmm. Well, we can't write a check to you as an individual. You've got to have a company in order for us okay. to hire you as a contract employee. Okay, contract. So we went and got the papers. And those five dollars, huh? Five bucks. A little more expensive, yeah. in, uh, especially Cook County. Well, he wasn't, he wasn't <laughs> using no flair. He either. You know? <laughs> <laughs> The point that I try to make to people is uh, sometimes you are always thinking of doing things and sometimes God has a, has a mm -hmm. way of making you do things, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You got to jump in, especially as a, as a, as a new business. Uh, so we started this business called American Business Consultants. So the accountant said, you got to have a company that starts with A. Give me some choices. Okay. Those were the days of the yellow pages. Yes, okay. yes. Probably before you, before you were born. I mean, we're right. about the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you had to sit out and eat breakfast. You know, they put them on the chair. Yeah, you know, the chair. <laughs> so that's how American business consultants got started. And, uh, you know, 
it took me a couple of years started walking around and been being still back back hurt for like 20 years after the accident oh. so you know, it just got better that led uh, to a couple of other businesses it was uh, the uh, the recession in Houston in those days the government had formed a, uh, an organization called the Resolution Trust Corporation I don't know if you guys have ever heard of that or not yeah, and, really true. and they were liquidating properties okay. Uh, okay. so I managed to get my hands on uh, a couple of uh, buildings which uh, they did like eight units in each one of them mm-hmm. one and three cheap they had to be rehabbed uh, and while I was rehabbing that I said I think I can myself. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I became the general contractor and okay. launched a company called Golden Road Construction Company. Okay. Now that is happening. American business consultants is going on. I'm giving you some background so you can understand yeah, yeah, the depth yeah. of uh, you oh, know, it's uh, interesting. And then uh, there is a national association of the remodeling industry. It's called as an area. It is here in the Chicago area. Okay. I became a member of that. One day I casually said, guys, we need to have a radio program to promote our services. And uh, my master's is communications and journalism. I also have a master's in psychology that I think mm-hmm. is sometimes the first year. They said, you taught me the background, news topics. So we started a one hour show on Saturdays. Mm-hmm. On Saturday. I was getting free book this Right. So I was so uh, That uh, kind of developed into Two hours, three hours, four hours, Saturday, four hours on Sunday, we were covering all kinds of topics. Mm-hmm. From getting attorneys on, to doctors on, to business people, basically just blasting away at how to succeed in life. Okay, wow. Uh, then uh, Salem Communications came to hear about that, and they offered me an opportunity to launch uh, the International News Hour as the producer and the anchor in the Houston market. Okay. So that's where the new anchoring part came in. <laughs> okay. So now I'm working 24-7. Yeah. yeah. A friend comes in and says, have you heard about the internet? I go, inter what? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a new thing coming in. And uh, he said, you have the marketing smarts. I know computers. Let's come together and start something. Mm-hmm. So we started a company called Web Houston International. And uh, we built it up into a powerhouse in the, in the Houston market. At one time, Time Warner Communications and Houston Post to our clients. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah, we got them on the, on the, Very nice. yeah. on the internet. Uh, eventually, I sold all of that mm-hmm. and uh, moved to Chicago in 2001. I was 46, okay. 47. And my goal was to retire when I was 46. Mm-hmm. Uh, my wife's family is here, and they were having health, uh, you know, major health issues. Mm-hmm. Mother-in-law had mm-hmm. cancer, father-in-law had strokes. So it was an ultimatum. Mm-hmm. My wife said, "Either we move or I move." Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. He just after a few of years. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> so the boss made the decision. Uh, we moved over here. Mm-hmm. In a couple of years, I did nothing. Traveled, had fun. But again, God has ways of mm-hmm. pointing you in mm-hmm. directions. Uh, I had cataracts in both eyes. I okay. could not even see now. I had like 10% vision left in one eye. One eye was totally blind. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and showed it to a doctor. She said, you, mister, you're not going to drive. You're not going to do anything. You're going to sit at home mm-hmm. till you get the surgery done. I'm always hyper. Yeah. Typical Aries personality. I'm bouncing off the walls now. And again, opportunities come. Mm-hmm. So my son, who is now an attorney, uh, he was going to Harper College, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, in the evenings he was working at uh, Marshall Fields selling women's shoes. I'm so sorry. Mm-hmm. Is it again? Not the first guest that's happened. Yeah, that's happened. Yeah. <laughs> no, this is my fourth year yeah. long. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. So, so anyway, <clears throat> my son comes home one day and says, "Dad, please do me a favor." get out of the house, do something. Mm-hmm. Like, man, what do you want me to do? Well, why don't you come to Marshall Fields? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, but I can't do anything. I cannot be a consultant. Mm-hmm. I cannot be on the computers. I, no, 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 we're not talking of those things there. Why don't you come and work on the floor of Marshall Fields? Mm-hmm. Like, are you nuts? Mm-hmm. I had my own 
fan club in Houston. Uh, <laughs> People would wait yeah. for autographs. Yeah, wow. It's like, well, that was Houston. No yeah. one knows you over here. Right, right. Okay, you're just another little Indian walking around the road now. <laughs> Tried my best not to do the job. Mm -hmm. I went in, I was not shaven. I had, you know, Indian spices coming out of my clothes. Mm -hmm. I did not want that job. Mm -hmm. They called me up after I filled up the application downstairs. So when can you start? Eight dollars and fifteen cents per hour. Mm -hmm. This was the Marshall Fields in uh, in uh, Woodfield Mall. Okay. We lived in the uh, Hoffman Estates then. Man, first two weeks now. My son is taking me to, to work. He had scheduled us to where we could drive right, together. Right. Sure. Yeah. Two or three days, two or three days in the evening. I was so afraid that someone would recognize me. Oh. So I went up to the manager and I said, you know, can I, what, what do you want me to do? Well, you're going to work in the men's clothing section, so, yeah. okay. Can I go and clean out the stalls and just, you know, fold yeah. the clothes? I don't want to be at the register yeah. where people will come and yeah. see me. Yeah. A couple of weeks went by like that, guys. And uh, I'm like, no one is really noticing who the heck I am. So what should I care? Right, right. I started getting on the front register. Mm -hmm. That was the best job I have had in my life. Really? Honestly, I enjoyed it so much. Uh, first off, I made a killer wardrobe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Because mm -hmm. then you had all the sales. Right? Sure. Yeah. So a couple of months into it, they, they promoted me into commission sales. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I still hold the record of opening the most new accounts of any associate in Marshall Field, 640 accounts in the eight months that I was there. Wow, <laughs> that's unbelievable. <laughs> okay. Loved it. So now one day I'm standing over there and I'm totally comfortable on the floor. Mm -hmm. I own it. Yeah. A friend of mine walks in, looks at me and goes, Muhammad, is that you? <laughs> <laughs> so it finally did happen. <laughs> I've been looking for this guy. Yeah. Since I moved from Houston, his name is Paul Cotillo. Okay. Uh, Paul used to be with the Schaumburg Police Department. Yeah. And he was the first social worker hired by a police department. Okay. So Paul had retired and he walks in there with his wife Shelby, gives me a big bear hug, big guy. He says, man, so you finally lost everything in life? You're working in much of you. I'm like, no, Paul, I'm enjoying this yeah. till I get my eye surgery done. And uh, I'm not allowed to drive, so, you know, I'm passing the time. I'm yeah. having fun meeting yeah. people. I said, what are you doing tomorrow? I said, tomorrow? I don't have anything on my schedule. I don't have a schedule anymore. <laughs> so I said, I'm going to come home and pick you up and take you with me. So Paul comes home now, picks me up, and he drives us to the unemployment office. Mm -hmm. He had another gentleman with him that Paul was helping to file his claim. And we walk in and we see all these resources there for employers, for job seekers. And my ears pricked up. I'm like, you know, how come no one has told anyone about this? Mm -hmm. Ask the secretary, who's the manager of this place? So she points us to a, to a room. There's the manager. We go and we knock on the door and we go, hey, I'm Muhammad, this is Paul. How come you got all this? No one knows about these resources. Who does your marketing for you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My favorite question. Yeah. And uh, he said, well, this is a state agency. We don't have a marketing department. So now Paul and I are driving back, and Paul switches the radio on, and it goes to 560 WIND. Mm -hmm. They had just changed formats from Spanish music to English talk. Mm -hmm. And they were saying, you know, we would love to have some new programs, da, 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 and we are in Arlington Heights. I said, Paul, swing around, let's go talk to these mm -hmm. guys. Paul said, yeah, well, I'm with your background in radio and everything. Mm -hmm. Why don't you launch a radio show to talk about these resources? Sound, sound like a good idea. And we, we may need to get the short version of your yes. media. Yes, yes, yes. yes. We yes. haven't we hit our topic we yet. We haven't gotten to our topic. But that's all right. <laughs> to, to make a long story short, we ended up launching uh, a TV show because radio was too expensive for us. And uh, we went on uh, cable television to launch a show called The Employment Hour. Okay. If you Google it, some of the old shows out there, uh, we didn't know what we were doing. I absolutely no idea. But we brought in employers, 
We brought in people who have succeeded against odds. We brought in job seekers. We brought in resources and started talking about what is out there. A couple of weeks later, after three months in the show, I get a call saying, we'd like you to join our team at the state office over there. Mm. That is how I ended up in that office. It's like my best friend to get a job. Yeah, that's it. So your advice is try not to get the job. <laughs> Things work out. <laughs> but, so right, right. but to Kevin's point about getting on topic, so that, that that's great. Um, yeah. And what are some of the things employers should be looking at in terms of where they can get first off uh, help in one yeah. form or another from, from the government? First off, let me, uh, let me put, put it this way. Uh, the government is not some aliens coming in from outer space. The government is you and me. We make the government. Okay. Uh, the resources are phenomenal that the government has. Unfortunately, they suck at marketing. Mm -hmm. They feel that, okay, we got, the, we got the programs, you know, people will come to us. There's absolutely no awareness. All these government servants that are out there were supposed to be people servants. They are there for their paycheck. Mm -hmm. they, they, they couldn't care less to make a right. difference. Okay. Okay. I started noticing that, and uh, so, so much out there that our tax dollars have paid for that is either being misused or not used at all. So especially now, from the business point of view, you have two things. You want to grow your business, and in order to grow your business, you need to have the right people to work there. Mm -hmm. I mean, I like to tell people in the job seeker side, I tell them, what is a business? It is not the... You know, you know, investors, it is not the management, it is the people who make a profit for their business that make a business run. Mm -hmm. So you got to have the productive employees, right? Without the employees, you don't have a business. Mm -hmm. Okay. With things constantly changing, technology is changing, you have to keep your crew trained on what is happening, what is coming down the pike. To the programs that, that they, these are some federal programs and they may be some state programs mm -hmm. also okay i'm going to focus on a couple of programs today for this for the mm -hmm. purpose of this discussion mm -hmm. and uh, if people want more information they can always call us uh, mm -hmm. they can always contact us and we'll be happy right. to we'll give you know, your information out later mm -hmm. later on that's fine we'll be happy to assist us needed mm -hmm. there's the program called uh, the viowa program workforce investment opportunities act it used to be the Workforce Investment Act, WIA, mm -hmm. about a couple of years back. Then some smart person said, you know, we need to justify our existence in this system, so we're going to rename it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Basically right. the same darn yeah. program right. with a couple of new bells and whistles. Right. Right. Okay. So the VOO program has got two sides to it. One is focused on the job seeker and the other is focused on the employer. Mm -hmm. So the job seekers now who have been laid off, collecting unemployment, or facing some other barriers to employment, like low family income and all that, or youth trying to come into the job market, there are different grants available. These are called as the 1B grant. It is for dislocated workers. Uh, 1A is for adults with you know barriers to, to employment, family income, mm -hmm. all kinds of stuff. And 1Y is for youth. Mm -hmm. Once people go through that grant, we started noticing that employers were telling us, my job was to make sure that employers got productive employees. Mm -hmm. And these people who are getting the training, at the end of the day, the state would come back and ask us, how many people got training, how many people got a job as a result of the training? Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't have a, a job, then that, that whole money is wasted, right? Mm -hmm. So we started noticing that employers were coming to us and they'll say, yeah, fine. I mean, you know, he got a piece of paper, she got a piece of paper. They don't have any work experience. Sorry, you can't hire them. Uh, we are not going to babysit them. So we kind of made a few suggestions. And uh, there was a grant that for a long time back, there was a grant for on-the-job training that for some reason or the other was taken off the table. Mm -hmm. That was brought back uh, about say about three years back now, three, four years back that have been brought back, to where an employer now can get a grant up to $10,000 in the Cook County area. Now these grants are driven by counties also. So Cook County had a slightly different program. Will County would have a different program. DuPage County would have a different program. But uh, as an employer, all you got to do is to find out where your uh, workforce or work net center is. 
reach out to them and they would be happy to assist you. Mm -hmm. So when you say workforce center, is that, would that be Googling DuPage County Workforce Center? Or Absolutely. Would? DuPage County WorkNet. Work the, the statewide branding now is WorkNet. WorkNet? Yeah. I mean, they went through uh, multiple brandings at one time, you know, the uh, IETC, Illinois Employment and Training Center, the one-stop center. Now, uh, it kind of happened during uh, Governor Blago's, uh, you know, governorship that the entire workforce system was WorkNet, or was branded as WorkNet. Mm, okay. So you could just call them up and basically say, I'm an employer, I'm looking to find out what grants are available. Is that the best route to bring these to your attention, or, is it, or should they start with you? Is that We'd be happy to help. We'd be happy to help, mm -hmm. because I mean, it's kind of difficult. Like, if you call the Arlington Heights Unemployment Office, for example, it's called as the one-stop center, because it is a partnership of eight agencies over there. We have the workforce, the WorkNet Center there, which is run by Business and Career Services. Uh, then IDES is there, Illinois Department of Employment Security. Uh, the DHS, DRS, all of those, you know, Harper College, mm -hmm. uh, CETA, all of those organizations. There's about eight different organizations that make up the Work Connect Center in Arlington Heights. Skokie has a different, uh, you know, service provider. Uh, National Able is doing the service providing over there. So you got in, in Cook County, you have about 40 different, 48 different service providers now under the WorkNet brand in one county. DuPage County, the WorkNet office is in Lyle. Okay. So I would be happy to, to connect any of uh, the, the viewers, any of the listeners with the right resources. Mm -hmm. So when you're, when you're thinking about these grants, it's basically if you hire the right type of person, in conjunction with applying for one of these grants, you might be able to get some money back. Absolutely. So if I hire somebody that needs on-the-job training and I'm willing to provide it, I might be able to get $10,000. Absolutely. Now, there, there are a few wrinkles to this. Uh, you cannot fire someone and hire someone in their place. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is the, the, that's the most important thing. You can't let someone go and bring in someone into this program. And I assume you have to keep them, the person you're hiring employed for a certain amount of time. Not necessarily. If they don't work out, they don't work out. Okay. There's no force. Mm -hmm. But it would be in your best interest to work with them. And uh, normally well, in, in Cook County, the, the way the program is being run, for the first six months, the grant would pick up up to 50% of the person's salary to a maximum of 10000 Okay. Mm -hmm. That's a huge chunk of money. Yeah. So that's what incentivizes you to keep them on. Absolutely. Okay. So you do the preliminary interviews and all that, you know, see that they have what it takes to be a good team member, then you take it from there. Is there a ton of paperwork? I mean, I, I Hardly said, any. Really? Honestly, the paperwork is so minimal. It used to be an application this thick. We minnowed it down to where it's maybe like a two or three page application. Mm. And you submit it before the hire has happened or after the hire has happened? Before the hire. Okay, and it so you get the approval important. before you do Correct. Hire. It is very important that you get the approval before hiring someone. Now, normally you approach the workmen center and you say, hey, I got this job. Have you got a client with the, with the required training or the skills? Oh, so they'll even put you in touch with the... Absolutely. Because a lot of people who are collecting unemployment are coming to these centers and they are getting the grants, they're getting trained. Or if an employer is, you have interviewed someone and you found someone for XYZ sources, you can call these centers up and say, you know, I'm planning on hiring, you know, Kevin, uh, here is his background. Do you think he would qualify for the grant? So that is called the reverse referral. So this, I mean, Sounds almost too good to be true because you pay a staffing agency to find people for you, there and you're you're paying you know fifty percent of their salary to the staffing agency. Yep. So you can go to work that they'll find you somebody and they'll pay for part of their salary if they. I mean, unimaginable. That's, that's what I'm saying, guys. I mean, I was they like, do oh. have terrible marketing because mm -hmm. I have. <laughs> <laughs> How come people don't know about this? <laughs> okay, you know, well, we don't have a marketing budget. Okay. Yeah. But uh, that has become a passion of mine, is to take this information to where, you know, I mean, I've seen grown-ups come and sit down and cry that I'm at the bottom of my rope. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been unemployed for so long, I'm not finding a job. And then there's, there's this huge disconnect out in the market, but there's a skills shortage. There was an article recently, uh, CNN Money, Patrick Gillespie had an article in the May issue of CNN Money. 
that there are 5.83 million job openings. But employers are not finding the people with the right skills. Yeah, as an employer, we always hear that. there's, you know, no one can find a job, and then we can't find employees, you know, when we're there you <laughs> go. Okay. <laughs> so, <clears throat> the program that we have developed with the Center for Strategic Solutions, again, is to bridge that gap. Job search itself is a skill that needs to be relearned. And no one is teaching that. No school is teaching that. I'm sorry, no career center is teaching that. No church is teaching that. No workforce department is teaching that. Mm -hmm. Okay, they are all following, you know, what color is my parachute? Who the heck cares? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What I care about is that, is the parachute functioning or not when I jump <laughs> off the plane? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? Right, right. But there is there's that one program for employers. Flipping back a little bit, if you hire a veteran, do you know how much uh, tax credits you can get for hiring a veteran? No. Between state and federal programs, about $17,500. Hmm. Crap. The numbers may change a little bit, but I'm talking of, you know, current knowledge yeah. that I have at this point. And this is something that you do through WorkNet too, or is this a different you, program? You would go to the Department of Employment Security, Department of Labor for those things. Uh, there is a program called as the w uh, WOTC, WOTC program, Work Opportunity Tax Credit. Mm -hmm. Heard about that? Mm, I don't think so. Yeah. And, and to I me, mean, and, and partly because I haven't been in a position of marriage. No, but it's not just you. Right. Right. I mean, you but know, I'm sure a lot I of people have with hundreds of employers in my database. I mean, I started a lot of crazy stuff uh, with uh, with WorkNet, and they allowed me to do it. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I started, for example, the first uh, email newsletter program. <laughs> they didn't even have that. Mm -hmm. I completely redesigned uh, their website. For if you look at the WorkNet NCC, you know, the Cook County website. I was the guy who redesigned mm -hmm. it because with my web background, we won an award for the best website redesign in Illinois. Mm -hmm. uh, the Golden Something Award from the Publicity Club of Chicago. Bottom line is this. So you have the Work Opportunity Credit Act that people don't know about. Up to 17500 This now, is... Uh... <laughs> Well, I, I've hired a lot of people, and I this is never on my radar. And I, you know, I so but you as a resource, people can call you and say, "I'm looking to hire this type of position. Where should I go? How should I? Who do I need to be put in touch with?" And you can kind of facilitate I, I, that. We would be happy to facilitate. We'd be happy to facilitate. Uh, I started this whole thing in uh, in April of this year. Uh, I had about thirty people come in for the first round of interviews. To join the team, uh, and I this was in Schomburg Library. We had an info session day. Mm -hmm. Said, How many of you want to make money? And all hands went up. <laughs> okay, there's the door walk out. Mm -hmm. How many of you want to make money while making a difference in people's lives? Mm -hmm. And out of the 30, we have taken 12 people on, and uh, they are undergoing treat, uh, you know, some, some training at this point how to present our programs to the job seekers and mm -hmm. the employers. <clears throat> so Team is building up. We'll be we'll be happy to to help any employer anywhere. I mean, we can do it virtually. We can do it, uh, you know, physically. We can go and talk to them. Okay. Well, you know what? This is a fascinating discussion, but in trying to keep within somewhat close to our no, time, time frame. Time frame. <laughs> uh, the first half an hour, all all the background thing cut it off. Yeah. Unfortunately, we uh, we can we don't have the editing oh. capabilities. But it was a really I mean it was yeah, an interesting, interesting story. Yeah. How to, yeah, I, it wasn't very interesting. I hate yeah. to interrupt you. I just wanted to. <laughs> okay. You know what I think? I think that a lot of times I think people who come here from other countries, you know, they see the opportunities that the natives don't, you know, because they're used to I was too comfortable. I, I, was in a, I was in a conference uh, a meeting just the other day. I said the first generation makes the money, yeah. uh, earns the money. The second generation has no idea how much, and the third generation earns the money. Yeah, right, <laughs> okay. right. So, uh, but there's another program uh, that I want to bring to the table. Uh, the state treasurer's office. You know they got money for businesses to expand and grow? Hmm. Did not know that either. And that has nothing to do with the state's budget. There's a separate line item for that. Okay. So you can go and talk to them. They can come in and they can guarantee the loan that you'll be getting from the SBA. Mm -hmm. They can buy you a, a better rate of interest. And this is for business expansion. If you want to add capacity, amongst other things. Hmm. 
Is that something you guys facilitate too? With Absolutely. The center? So how, well, how does the Center for Strategic Solutions, how do you guys, do you guys get paid if I call you up and need help with this? Do you take a, you know, a cut of the salary of the person I hire or how does that work? That is something that uh, is under review at this point okay. because we are not a staffing agency. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, even after I left WorkNet, uh, my relationship is very strong. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, they let me go on one condition that I should still have my office over there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So I'm keeping the office that I had, uh, you know, in the beginning. And uh, I was talking with my former boss about it. Uh, he said, if it is a free government program, and you point people in that direction, ethically, if you make money off of it, it will not be ethical. Mm -hmm. uh, so I said, how would, how would you advise me to do it? He said, well, people can hire you and they can put you on a retainer. Mm -hmm. So you're not getting a percentage of what you get, but we can definitely you know, guide you and uh, you, know, you, you get the grant, up to you. You don't get the grant, please be pointed to it. Percentage of the grants because that would be a right. right. But uh, there are so many other programs. I just mentioned a couple to you. There is another program to the federal grants program, which is geared towards layoff avoidance. So if you have a bunch of uh, employees and you are upgrading your systems, for example, and these employees don't have the skills for those systems that you're bringing in, you know, instead of laying them off and hiring new people, you can partner with the, with the government to provide training to your existing okay. workforce. Like retraining, more or less. Retraining, yeah. Yeah. okay. The state picks up 50% of the cost. Hmm. So there are training programs available, there are trainers available. You decide what program that you want to, you know, let's say you're upgrading your software system, right? You decide which program you're going with, we can find you the trainer, we can connect you with this incumbent worker training program, that's what it's called as. Your 50% contribution would be the salary that you're paying to the employer, I mean to the employees, mm -hmm. the space that you're providing for the training. You don't have to even put cash from your pocket. Mm -hmm. So, uh, in conclusion, Mohammed, if people did uh, want to talk to you, if they have questions, I mean, what's the best way for them to uh, to reach you? Email is the best way. And your email is? CEO at CFSS.us, the Center for Strategic Solutions. Okay. Dot US. Beautiful. All right, Jim, how can people reach you? Best is just a uh, phone call, 630 272 And if Kevin. you want to schedule a free consultation, you can call the Flaherty Lot, 630 324 6666. And check out more videos and audio at seizeyourbusiness.com. We've done over, I think we're at about 80 episodes now. So we've got a lot, of, a lot of good content there. So please check us out, seizeyourbusiness.com. And if you think of somebody who you think you would like to see interviewed on our program, or if you yourself would like to please give one of us a call and uh, we can make that happen as well thank you very much thanks for listening Mohammed, thank you